Welcome back to another Alvado video. Now in today's video, we're going to be watching a game played by Spicy Athies. I've covered a game of his before on this channel, but that game was from a low roll spot. This game is going to go a little bit differently as you might have seen from the thumbnail, but yeah, this game is going to be played from a high roll spot. And that is exactly the theme of today's video, how to convert a high roll into a win. I'm sure we've all been in a spot where we're 100 HP going into stage four, and we're not able to convert that into a win, sometimes not even a top four. But hopefully we can learn from Appies and figure out when he chooses to greed or when he chooses to play it safe. But before we get into the game, I'm gonna have to ask you to subscribe. I, I do wanna grow my channel. And I'm trying to help the masses. So I would appreciate it if you subscribed. Okay, now let's get into the video. I am going to talk about that admin, but first let's cover his items and see what the, his first augment is. So we went for Sword Off of Carousel, he gets dropped Glove and Tear. We can see it's Double Tome, Herb's Grab Bag, or Luden's Echo. He already has two admins, so he's inclined to take Earth's Grab Bag so he can try and go for four admin. And the reason why he wants to go for four admin so bad is because his admin was on ally death. Your, ad your admins gained 350 HP. So that admin is not that crazy. But the thing is, is that the on ally death has some of the most broken admin combinations possible. And since that is the first one that he chose with admin, that means that the second combination of your admin is going to always be triggered with on ally death. The first one shows you completely random effect, completely random trigger, but the second one shows you a random effect, but it's always the same trigger. So he's looking to try and get four admin, and he's looking for either on ally death, admins gain 40 mana, which is one of the most broken admins in the game right now. They're going to fix this in the most recent uh, the most recent patch. And the second one that he's looking for is on ally death, admins have a 40% chance to drop a gold. Now, you might be able to guess which one he gets based on, based on what his final board looks like. And one of the first things I want to direct your attention to is how he chooses to make his board for every round. Now you can see he has two LeBlancs on his board, and he actually chooses to play this Lulu as a frontline unit, because Lulu technically has more HP than a Blitzcrank and a, you know, a Vi-1, a Yasuo-1. He's just using it as just like a meat shield, because it just has the most HP. Now on top of that, he's going to have a lot of turns where he chooses to play duplicates of admins because the admins are what's getting benefit from the admin effect. So you might think, oh, why does he have two LeBlancs on his board? He's not getting any extra traits from you know, having two of the same unit on his board. But the thing is, it's not about the traits. It's about this is his strongest board because he's able to have two admins that are both benefiting from the buff at the same time. We can see he goes for Cloak here, and I know that happened really quickly, but he chose on ally death. Your admins have a 40% chance to drop one gold. So this is exactly why he's also going to continue playing nothing but admins because it's not on ally death like you have a chance to drop one gold it's for every single admin on your board you have a 40 percent chance to drop one gold so if you have five units on your board and all of them and all of them are admins like he has here when this camille dies every single one of his other units have a 40 percent chance to drop a gold and then that happens with all of his units it seems a bit underwhelming until you realize that fact. And so a lot of times in this game, he actually tends to sack his board because he wants more of his units to die so he can trigger the on death effect. And he has this LeBlanc too with two items because he was able to get more items with Earth's grab bag. And then he was able to get this LeBlanc too because he just had two LeBlancs from the beginning of the game. It looks like a crazy high roll, but he really only naturaled one LeBlanc and he just got two of them from the orb. I mean, obviously that's still a high roll, but it's not like he natural this this LeBlanc too. It's not like he hit three LeBlancs. 
he definitely knows a lot more about how this admin works than I do because when I was watching his game he was kind of running down exactly how the on ally death effect works with his chat and you can see how he has a Zac in his shop he was saying that friendly units only count as units that started on your board so if a Zac were to die and then summon the two blobs then the two blobs don't actually count the trigger on ally death effect Let's see what he goes for for a second augment. Opponent grab bag, jeweled lotus, and scoped weapons. Obviously, he's not going to take scoped weapons. He's considering opponent grab bag, but he already has so many extra items from the first grab bag too. He didn't think he really needed that many more items. And with how his items work out, he's able to go ahead and fully itemize this LeBlanc with jeweled lotus on this turn. Because... Making Guard Breaker makes it so that you're getting the extra bonus damage from the crit that the item gives you with Jeweled Lotus because now LeBlanc's ability can crit so he doesn't need to build JG or IE. Another reason why he took Jeweled Lotus is because he was talking about how Jeweled Lotus is a higher cap than what component grab bag could give him. And if you look and see who's streaking right now, Sully TFT, he scouted him early on. He just scouted there, him there for a second. So if you want to pause and look at his board. He also had the on ally. Um, the on ally death admin effect. But his was on ally death. Your admins gained 40 mana. And he's playing blue buff heart zote. So he was already looking at his board. And thinking okay I'm not going first. Sully is already guaranteed first. Now, obviously, you don't know exactly what happens in this game, but... He's basically assuming that the entire lobby is playing for second place. He has one of the most broken admins, with one of the most broken units, with one of the most broken combos in blue buff heart Zoe. So, it's... Sully can essentially just sit on, on a blue buff... Or Zoe 2 for the rest of the game and just go go level 9, which is probably what he's going to do. Another interaction that Appy's talked about was how the on ally effect, on ally death effect works with Hackerim. So you know how I said before that the unit that ha has to start on your board for it, it for it to be considered an ally. Well apparently since the Hackerim starts on your board, it's considered a unit. And so it's coded in the game to trigger on death effects as soon as it dies, which is right after it sends your unit into the backline. And apparently he knew that, which is exactly why he went for the Zed off of Carousel, because he was looking for Zoe, but he didn't want to roll too much gold, and he ended up not finding Zoe. So he just went for the Zed off of Carousel. You can see he found the Zoe now. And it's crazy because I was trying to figure out what the summoner trait was for this set. You know, I think a lot of the summoner traits are by far some of the coolest traits in the game. You know, I thought Abomination was really cool. Um, Namzi was, was really fun to play with. I just think a lot of the summoner traits are normally among the coolest traits in the game. So I was bummed to see that there was no summoner trait, but I guess they're basically saying that Hackerim is a summoner trait because technically it summons a unit on your board. But yeah, that, I mean, if you're just watching any of these fights. You can see essentially how much gold he's getting. He's level eight, 27 gold on 4-2. That's not like uber rich or anything. But it's definitely uh, definitely above what you should be at in a normal game. And he's just getting more gold. I glanced over the hero augment. He just took aim assist because he had six LeBlancs. He was offered double Zed and LeBlanc. Which kind of sucks for him. Because he didn't want to take a LeBlanc augment. But everyone else in the lobby gets to see two four cost hero augments. So there's probably going to be a lot of people... That have really strong boards 
But at the end of the day, he does have one of the most broken admins in, so he does not really care. As far as positioning goes, you can see since he has aim assist LeBlanc, he kind of just wants his LeBlancs targeting the same unit, so he puts both of them on the same side. And then he just has this Zach solo frontline because he has stone plate. Also, he wants his admins, he wants everything, he wants his a unit of his to die before an admin dies, if that makes any sense. Like this Zach is not an admin. So he wants Zach to die before all of the admins so that every single admin on his board can trigger the on on ally death effect. He's level 8, he was 50 gold. He wanted to roll down to try and stabilize a bit more. There's a bit too many pairs that he can that he that he's trying to hold on to here. He wants to hold this Nunu. I'm not exactly sure why, because it doesn't really make his board that much stronger. But I think he was just trying to hold on to every single five cost because he knows from this spot he's going to have so much gold, so much gold that he is essentially going to guarantee hit at least a two star five cost and he's not down to just sell these five costs in order to just make an econ threshold because he wants to hold on to all of them just in case he hits there's a lot of times where you, you hold on to specific units and then end up selling them later and then regret selling them because you you wind up finding them again and then you lose out on having potentially a stronger board. And then you're rolling, if you're continuing to roll gold anyways, most of the time, you know, it doesn't really matter. So he ended up making LeBlanc 3 he was a bit dizzy because he had so many units on his bench and he just wanted to clear up bench space that he forgot to bench his LeBlanc with the with the Thieves Gloves because he itemized the first LeBlanc 2 that he had and then when he found a second LeBlanc 2, he gave it a Thieves Gloves and if you don't know, when you combine a unit, it randomly chooses which one gets to keep the items. But you can prevent that by having the unit with the items that you want on the board so if he had the one of the if he had the leblanc with the items that he wanted on the board and then he put the leblanc with the items that he didn't want on the bench and then made the leblanc three then the leblanc with the items that he wanted would have stayed there but of course he had a he had a soraka two so he was able to just put the items on soraka two not that much weaker he doesn't get to utilize the effect from aim assist as well but since he has jeweled lotus thieves gloves actually gives 40 percent crit right off the bat since he has jeweled lotus he's already guaranteed going to be critting so jeweled lotus on a backline unit this set is actually not that bad as compared to last sets where uh, gloves didn't give you as much crit but they gave you dodge chance which is why you would see so many people prioritizing thieves gloves on frontline units in previous sets but in this set there's benefit to both frontline units and backline units, which I think is pretty cool. So he's now level 9, right? And he still knows that Sully essentially has a guaranteed win here because of how broken his, his combination of, of items and units are. But he's really trying to press the issue. He made 6 admin, and you can see that he's basically gaining... 10 to 20 gold every round because of this admin effect. See what he chooses to go for off of Carousel. He wanted that Giant Slayer on Fiddlesticks because he has a Fiddlesticks on his bench. But someone took it from him before he could get it. He just goes for Alice of Power. He's rolling above level 9, above level, he's rolling above 50 gold on level 9. And he rolled too far there. But then he forgot that he was going to get like 20 gold. Like he basically exclaimed, oh no, I'm not going to be able to make 50 gold this round. And then he was like, oh wait, yes I am. 72. We're <laughs> from 47 gold to 72. 
I also wanted to talk about 6 admin because I had forgot to mention what it does. But 2 admin, you get the trigger and effect. And then 4 admin, you get an added effect with the same trigger. And then 6 admin increases the effects by 100%. Whenever an, a friendly unit dies, the admins are going to gain 700 HP and they're going to have an 80% chance to drop 40 gold or to drop one gold, 40 gold. I mean, basically 40 gold. I wonder if it works like they have an 80% chance to drop one gold or they have a 40% chance to drop one gold twice. I actually don't know. also have realized that I haven't been talking too much about how he's converting but by being honest this is not a normal game <laughs> this is this is beyond me like you can't I can't expect to I can't expect to try and teach someone anything from a game like this at least you know that, you know, the admin, this admin combination is extremely powerful. So maybe you'll consider taking it a little bit more. There are a lot of traits in previous sets like Shimmer Scale and, you know, other econ traits where you could be in a spot like this a lot more often. But with this admin, it's extremely hard to actually be in a spot like this because you not only have to be in a spot to play admin, but you also have to be in a spot to... You also have to like hit the admin. You have to hit the exact admin rate that you can't just get for free. I'm going to go ahead and slow down the video so we can see entire process here we can can enjoy the in, the entire rest of the game and also there's not really much to talk about his positioning here because basically all he's doing is he's saying i know i'm stronger than you so i'm just going to greed every single one of the jana hexes this guy has two shrouds and he's shrouding his entire team it also almost doesn't matter because this this Janna is is rainy weather Janna. So the Janna gives your team extra starting mana, so it almost counteracts the the shroud. Yeah, he kills this guy here, the laser core player, while making infinite gold. And it's also, he, you see, he doesn't, oh wait, he does have an Urga on his board, but earlier in one of the rounds, he didn't have an Urga on his board. And he had a Syndra that threw in an Urga, and then that Urga farmed a chest. I was watching the game where that happened, and I was confused on how he got this chest, but then I realized that was because he threw in an Urgot. So he's looking for Zac 3, Syndra 3, Mordekaiser 3, and Nunu 3. He's one, he's one off of, he's two off of Nunu, one off of Syndra. It's Nunu there. Now I want you to understand that in able to be in a spot where you hit a 3 star 5 cost in a game filled with challenger level players. In a set like this where there is essentially no econ augments, like obviously underground is an econ augment, but underground is not as potent as previous, previous econ augments have been. Mercenaries was was one of the most insane econ augments, and Shimmer Scale was one was also an econ augment where you could realistically continue spiraling your board into like some crazy money generating machine. 
But yeah, even with those traits, it's still so incredibly difficult to get a 3 star 5 cost. I've only gotten, I think, 4 3 star 5 costs ever. And he's able to get not one, not two, but three 3 star 5 costs in one game. And then he says, screw the Zac. I'm gonna put four Aegis. It's not like he it's not like he can lose anyways. <laughs> Nunu 3 is just giant ball, basically does infinite damage, one taps every unit runs into. Mordekaiser, he drops three buildings and all of them basically one tap. And then Syndra throws in your entire bench. And the units that it throws in gets like a 5,000 health shield and then also gets like 200 armor and MR, like something ridiculous. And Sully being the homie he is, even though he had a position where he basically should have gotten a free first, Happy's, Happy's denies that victory with three 3-star three 5 costs. He's rolling because he knows he cannot lose and the reason why he's rolling is because he's trying to get another three star five cost because that would give you a bigger clip <laughs> i mean i feel like no one has even seen three in a ranked game i mean maybe i'm sure it's happened before but i mean a ranked game like this he says screw it i'm just gonna put them on the bench and have Sindra throw them in <laughs> Yeah, he just kind of it's the dub obviously i just wanted to analyze this video because i feel like a situation like this almost never happens and this video is more so of a spectacle of one of the most insane games ever played and definitely less about the learning but i'm still hoping that you at least learned something either way if you like the video like it and i'll see you in the next one